Welcome to Electron Online. Before we get into the details of how to analyze the accuracy of Taylor series or McLaurin series as we add more and more terms to evaluate a particular function, we're going to do a simple example. We're going to use the equation e to the x. We know the McLaurin series for that is right here. And we're going to evaluate it for values of x equals 0 0.2, 0 0.5, x equals 1, and x equals 2 for one term, two terms, three terms, four terms, and five terms in the series. Here are the accurate calculated values to, to five decimal places for e to the 0 0.2 power, e to the 0 0.5 power, e to the first power, and e to the second power. Now we're going to see how quickly the value will converge to the correct value. And you'll see that for values of x being closer to zero, that convergence will go very quickly. Matter of fact, when x equals 0, e to the 0 is equal to 1, which is equal to the first term. That means the first term here will give us an accurate value for the Maclaurin series of e to the x when we use only one term. But you can see that as the value for x diverges more and more from x equals 0, it will take longer, it will take more terms to get to an accurate value to five decimal places of e to the x evaluated for those particular values of x. And understanding that is very important in understanding how the McLaurin series and how the Taylor series work where we try to approximate values for functions. So here, let's start with the first one, with one term. It doesn't matter what value you plug in for x. Well, no, it does matter. Sorry, I'll take that back. Okay, starting with the one term where we just take the very first term right here. Now, since we only have one term in there, it doesn't matter what value we plug in for x because you don't count all the other terms except the first term. So that means that this is equal to 1, 1, 1, and 1. And notice you only get an accurate value when x equals 0. For x equals 0 0.2, it gives you a reasonable value, but still not quite close enough. How about if we have two terms? Well, now we're going to add 1 plus the value for x. So this becomes 1.2. And notice after only the first two terms, you get a reasonably close value for the value of e to the 0 0.2 power by just taking the first two, the first two terms in the infinite series. Here we get 1.5. Notice it's not as close, but not too bad. Here we get 1 plus 1, which is 2, and here we get 1 plus 2, which is 3. Notice that for the value x equals 2, you don't get anywhere close to having the correct number for e to the second power when you only take the first two terms of the infinite series. Now let's take three terms. So now I have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Now uh, x squared, if you have 0.2, that's 0 0.04 divided by 2, which is 0 0.02. So we get 1.22. And notice how close we are to the actual value to five decimal places. When we get to number 5 here, that would be, well, let's see. I'm going to get a calculator because it's going to get more difficult here. So we have, uh, we have uh, 0.5. So we add 1.5 plus 0.5 squared divided by 2. So 1.5 plus 0.5 squared divided by 2 equals, we get 1.625. And here we're also beginning to get reasonably close after only the first three terms. Now when x equals 1, then we get 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus a half, that's 2.5. So not too close, but we're getting there. And when x equals 2, we get, that's 3, plus 4 over 2, that would be 5. All right, what happens when we go to four terms? Now we're going to add an additional. After 1.22, we get 0.2 cubed divided by 6. So 0.2 cubed divided by 6 equals, and we add that to 1.22, and now we get the value of 1.22. 22133. And notice we're getting very close. You already have the first three decimal places correct. How about the next one? So here we plug in 0.5 cubed. 0.5 cubed divided by 6 equals, add that to 1.625, and now we get the value of 1.6458645. Six, 
8, and one more would be 3. And notice we already have the first two decimal places, so we're getting fairly close with only four terms when x equals 0.5. Now, when x equals 1, we're going to add another 1 sixth to 2.5. So 1 sixth, 1 divided by 6 is, uh, yes, the plus 2.5. That gives us 2.66667. And we're getting closer to the element as well. And when x equals 2, we add, let's see, we have 2 cubed. That's 8 divided by 6 and plus 5. And we get 6.33333. All right. So now we add one more term. Let me start on that one since I already have that in my calculator. So now we're going to add plus 16 divided by 24. And we get 7. Over here, we have 2.6666666 and add that plus... 124. 1 divided by 24 equals, and now we get 2.70833. And over here, okay, we add 0.5 to the fourth power divided by 24 and add that to 1.645833 equals, and we end up at 1.64. 844. Four. Notice we have the first three decimal places after only using five terms. And over here, I think we're going to get really close to that one. Let's try. So we have uh, 0.2 to the fourth power divided by 24 and add that to 1.22133 equals. And notice we get 1.2. 22140. So after five turns, we get the exact value, well, the exact value to five decimal places of e to the 0.2 power. Of course, when we use x equals 0.5 or e to the 0.5 power, we only have the first three decimal, the first three decimal places. When we use x equals one, we only have the first decimal place. And when we use x equals two, we don't have the first decimal place yet. So you can see that as the value for x diverges more and more from x equals zero, it takes more and more terms to get to a reasonably accurate value to a certain number of decimal places for the evaluation of the function f of x equals e to the x. And understanding this will help us understand the rules and laws of Maclaurin and the Taylor series, as we'll see in the videos to come. And that's how it's done.